I am the male lead's ideal in the sweet romantic story, the one who went abroad. The reason for going abroad was neither for studying nor for treatment, but because I accepted 50 million yuan from her father. My system had long told me that I was destined to be a villainous supporting character, and that by Lucia's side, there would appear a man who resembled me by 60% but was inferior to me in every way, and that he would completely replace me. At first, I scoffed at the idea, thinking that a man could not be entangled in love and that it was merely a charade to avoid being controlled by the system in the future. In the end, who else but George could be worthy of Lucia? George, remember, you need to make Lucia fall in love with you, then dump her, abandon her, and crash her loving heart into pieces. She's a spoiled girl, easy to coax, so the task isn't too difficult. Once you complete the task, you can avoid your original life script. As long as you complete the task, you can escape your predestined fate. I squinted my eyes in the sun listening to the so-called system's gentle guidance in my mind, recalling memories from my middle school days. My name is George. When I was 14, I was playing around with friends, and a basketball hit me hard on the head. When I woke up in a daze, I suddenly realized the truth. I was the male lead's ideal in a sweet romantic story, a villainous supporting character, and an obstacle in the heroine's love life. After falling in love with the heroine in college, I would abandon her for 50 million yuan from her father, leaving her behind and going abroad to live a life of debauchery. Soon, I would squander all the money. After returning home, I would find the heroine with a man even poorer than myself, which would make me resentful and greedy, turning me into the villainous supporting character who would add the final brick to the heroine's love story, ending in a tragic exit. After these plot details flashed through my mind, I clapped my hands repeatedly in the hospital. Oh. So that's how it is, fine. I won't play along anymore. From then on, I have a brain but I won't study, eh? Just playing around. I know the answers to the questions, but I won't write them. E.H. Just playing around. I'm sick but I won't go to the hospital. I'll cover myself with a white cloth, eh? Just playing around. The next second, a mechanical voice sounded, Damn it, host, stop fooling around, please. The world is about to collapse, I immediately sat up, looked around warily, and asked, Who? Who's talking? The mechanical voice sounded again, Stop looking. Only you can hear me, I'm the system that maintains the operation of this world. It then explained the situation to me, everything in this book world was fine until I woke up. The plot started deviating from its original path, and as long as I continued to act willfully, the main characters wouldn't end up together, and the world would completely collapse. So, host, please, return to the main storyline quickly. I sneered at the air around me and gave a hard middle finger to the invisible figure. Why should I do that? You carry the fate of the entire world. If you continue to be irresponsible, everyone will be dragged down by you. Can you bear to see so many people die because of you? It's up to you to choose between sacrificing yourself to save the world or being selfish and dragging everyone to hell with you. And then, has this world been kind to me? What do others have to do with me? Thanks to your stupid plot, I lost my father at six, my mother at seven. I have no relatives or friends, not even grandparents. You've really done a great job creating this character. I'm not even the main character, so why do you treat me like this? The system helplessly said, blame the author, not me. Ignoring its nonsense, I turned my head away and continued to pull the white cloth over my head, saying, Tire, let it be destroyed, hurry up. Seeing me hopeless, it tried to tempt me. How about I increase your luck value? It can improve your success rate in doing things. I asked under the blanket, What's the use? Can it change the plot? No. So I shook my head. It continued, How about I increase your talent value? You can learn things with half the effort. How about that? I asked again. What's the use? Can it change the plot? No. 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 Is there something wrong with you, system? I'm a person who dies in my twenties. What's the use of these things? After a long pause, the system finally offered a proposal worth considering. I discussed it with the main system. As long as you make Lucia fall in love with you, take to 50 million from her father. Then dump her and crush her loving heart into pieces, we'll consider the task complete and give you freedom. 
I nodded and demanded additional luck and talent values as compensation for the author's years of malice. The system was speechless but eventually agreed to my demands, informing me that I couldn't speak or write about the plot details, and any means of conveying this information were automatically blocked. It told me not to think about anything else and to focus on the task, being a diligent and responsible host. Despite this, in the days to come, I liked to challenge the limits at the edge of tasks. Scaring the working system was my greatest pleasure. September, the day when freshmen arrived at HUA University. The school had arranged for volunteers to help with luggage at the gate. Many bows were more than willing to help the new female students with their luggage, hoping to showcase their strength and perhaps strike up a romance. However, Lucia was not among those being helped. When the system alerted me that Lucia had arrived, I looked toward the gate. The sunlight was glaring, making it hard to see the girl in the light blue knitted top and white pleated skirt clearly. She was holding a small laptop bag and standing under the scorching sun, staring at the five or six pieces of luggage on the ground with a somewhat confused look in her almond-shaped eyes, which were partially visible above her mask. Lucia's spoiled, manipulative, rich girl persona was vividly depicted in the information the system had transmitted to me. But was this delicate, school goddess-like girl really her? Silly and sweet, I remarked with a brief glance, go now. This is a great opportunity. Quickly go help that heroine with her luggage. The system urged. Show off your superior strength and inadvertently reveal your toned arm muscles. The heroine is innocent and inexperienced in love. She not only be grateful for your help but also. Sorry, I'm not interested. I gave the girl another glance and turned to leave. The system blared alarms in my ears, pleading desperately. Ignoring its nose, I walked over to my vest-wearing volunteer roommate, David, and patted him on the back. There's a pretty girl. Want to help? Hearing this, my roommate perked up immediately and followed me to the girl without a second thought. Need help, miss? He asked. Lucia turned her head at the sound, glanced at us for a second, and then said, Yes. Thank you, senior. Her mask moved slightly and I could almost imagine the unguarded smile behind it in the stifling summer heat. A rare breeze blew by, carrying a sweet, milky scent. She walked closer shyly. Senior, I have quite a bit of luggage. No problem, my roommate said, casually flexing his toned arm muscles as he picked up her six pieces of luggage and prepared to leave. He then turned back to me and said, Wan Jay, you go ahead with your stuff. I'll take the luggage for the junior and come back later to thank you. The system babbled incessantly in my ear, scolding me for deviating from the plot, calling it an unforgivable sin. I smiled slightly and said to my roommate, No, I'll help the junior with her luggage too. Saying this, I took the laptop bag from her hand. Both my roommate and the junior looked at me in confusion. The luggage seemed more than manageable for the two of us. Up ahead, my roommate huffed and puffed, carrying the suitcases, while behind him, I walked leisurely carrying the laptop bag and chatting with the junior, making her laugh in surprise. She occasionally let out sweet, giggly laughs, and without looking, I could imagine her almond-shaped eyes forming crescent shapes in our casual conversation. I added her on WeChat seamlessly, the system in my ear cheered wildly, marveling at my unexpected maneuver. Looking up, I saw my roommate's resentful gaze, as if he wished he could glare a hole through me. Lucia's affection was straightforward. After getting my contact information, she didn't wait for me to take the initiative to reach out to her. Instead, she found various reasons to chat with me every day. She sent one cute emoji after another, and her sweet voice messages came one after another. She always had endless things to say to me and endless things to share. From what new dishes the cafeteria had introduced to seeing a stray cat on the roadside. She filled my life bit by bit with these trivial matters, full of joe. Is this the power of a dream girl? So I curiously asked her why she liked me so much. Didn't she feel shy about pursuing someone so openly? Lucia simply smiled and replied, I like you, so I pursue you. Why should I be shy? Being shy is worse than not getting what I want in the end. Her affection was pure, but I agreed to her pursuit only because of the system's requirements. She was overjoyed, her almond eyes sparkling. She didn't know that dating her was just my task a necessary step to escape a tragic future. And the only way to prevent this world from collapsing, 
She often waited for me outside the lab, mischievously claiming that the takeout she was holding was homemade. I prepared bag after bag of frozen handmade dumplings for her. When I got injured at her part-time job, she would tearfully put on an unnecessary pink band-aid for me. In the scorching summer, I gave her a string of Buddhist beads, telling her that a calm heart keeps you cool. When she saw me interacting with other women, she would stand there glaring, pouting angrily, but if I called her, she would awkwardly inch closer, once near, she would cling to me like a boneless little kitten. Her love was sincere and passionate, and me, I didn't know myself. Maybe it was guilt, in her sophomore year. I used the prize money from a competition to take her to an amusement park. Under the blooming fireworks, we kissed. She used to ask why I was like a block of wood, unaffected by her teasing. Did she lack charm? In two years of dating, the most we had done was kiss on the cheek. But now, the bold and outgoing girl who loved to tease was shyly shrinking her neck, blushing like a coke shrimp. I couldn't tell her that we were destined not to be together, so I didn't dare to irresponsibly take all her love. She was always meant for her destined male lead, and I was just a tool to teach her about love and hate. She said, George, when we have kids in the future, we must bring them to the amusement park. My eyes flickered, and I asked why. She hugged my waist, coyly saying, this is where we had our first kiss. It's rare for you to show some affection today, and actually kiss a common girl like me. I hugged her shoulders without responding to her teasing words. Lucia. Yes, don't date poor guys in the future. Why? She propped herself up. Clearly unhappy with my words, I don't care if you're poor or rich. I like you, so you're a good guy. Her expression was serious, full of determination. Besides, I don't believe your situation will remain the same. My dad says I've always had good taste. Everything I like is the best. And the man I like must be the best too. You. George. A golden fish isn't meant to stay in a pond. It becomes a dragon when it encounters a storm. I looked at her, seeing trust and expectation in her bright eyes. My heart ached inexplicably, but I forced a smile, showing her a strained expression. Looking up, the fireworks' brilliance in the sky lasted only a moment before the colorful sparks gradually faded leaving only drifting smoke, slowly dissipating in the breeze, moved. I gently squeezed her warm hand, wanting to remember the warmth of this moment. She happily jumped into my arms like a lively elf, grabbing my hands and holding her face close to mine. I was moved by such a Lucia, but her love repeatedly forced me to stay awake. I knew we had no future. Fate's hands allow no defiance. The heroine ultimately belongs to the hero. Lucia never disclosed her family background to me, during our passionate love, it seemed that nothing but love mattered. She didn't care that I was a poor boy, and I could ignore and forget the not-so-distant future. She wanted to be with me every moment, and we spent our days fully yet aimless. However, I became increasingly busy. Professors and mentors would call me daily to check on project progress. Using the talent and luck values given by the system, I discovered some promising opportunities and started developing small projects. Lucia pouted unhappy that I spent less time with her. I pinched her cheek but said nothing, hoping she would gradually get used to my absence. After all, our time together was limited. She made our small rented apartment incredibly cozy. Every time I came home man saw her lazily lying on the sofa asking if I brought any sweets. Happiness filled my chest. That was my home, a concept I had lost since my parents passed away. A warmth I had never experienced in this world, a place where I wanted to rest my heart. Yet, it felt so unreal, as if fate could take it away from me at any moment. I often worked late and relied on coffee to stay awake. Lucia, being a drama queen, threw away all my coffee and replaced it with children's milk powder. I could only helplessly hold her waist as she clung to me, sitting on my lap and wrapping her arms around my neck, disrupting my work. I nuzzled her hair and sighed. Lucia cares for me. I'm so happy. She hummed proudly, oblivious to the tears welling up in my eyes where she couldn't see. George. Hum. Are you crying? How could I be? My eyes are just too tired. Okay. She didn't know that every night, I was reluctant to sleep, trying to stretch our time together as long as possible. I lay in bed, quietly watching her, wanting to look at her sleeping face a little more. In the morning, I always woke up from the same nightmare 
desperately watching the calendar days pass by, while she gently stroked my back and asked what happened. I could only shake my head weakly, hurriedly using work as an excuse to leave, and willing to even give her a comforting look, selfishly shortening our time together. I was like holding a sharp needle at both ends, any slight force would cause double pain. She said she understood everything, that she knew my hard work now was for our future. Chokingly, she said with such a diligent husband, she could be a beautiful, rich lady in the future. She didn't know that when she said that, my heart felt like it was being sliced into pieces, but I could only nod bitterly. Two more months, in two months, her father would find me and offer me a check to leave her. The moment I touched the check, our love would vanish, and I would officially become the gold-digging man despised by everyone, the one who dumped Lucia for money, the dark past in the original story. But actually, Lucia, I don't want that 50 million. I no longer simply love you to complete a task, but the system said whether I take it or not, the ending is predetermined. I'm just a conscious puppet in a written script. Even if there's a fire pit ahead, whether I avoid it or not, I'll still be burned to ashes. But if I follow the prescribed trajectory and play my role well, this world won't collapse and you will be its heroine, achieving that happy and beautiful future. Lucia, you will be very happy, have a loving husband, a perfect family, and maybe even your own children. When you recall me in your old age, you might cite your poor judgment back then, falling for a scoundrel like me. Unfortunately, when you think of me, your beautiful almond-shaped eyes will no longer curve into crescents. I will no longer be the vicious supporting character. At that time, I will hide in the dark, in places you won't notice, like a thief watching you, watching you fall in love, then becoming mad with jealousy and grievance. But don't worry, this time I'm clear-headed. I won't destroy your love, point oh for that day came quickly. The night before, I held her in my arms, inhaled her pleasant scent, and hoarsely asked, Lucio, if I left without saying goodbye, would you be angry? Are you acting in a drama, I'm serious. She immediately raised her head, eyes pretending to be fierce, yes, if you dare to leave without saying goodbye, I'll break up with you and completely forget you, changing bow friends every week, she snorted arrogantly, don't think I'm not popular, many people in school have given me love letters, she gently ran her fingertip down my cheek, seemingly wanting to make me jealous, we've been together for almost three years, I'm tired, it's just right to find a young puppy, I tapped her nose and smiled, you heartless little thing, the light bulb flickered and dimmed, in the interplay of light and shadow, her face became blurry. I smiled bitterly and turned off the light, saying, I might be very late tomorrow. If the light is broken, replace it. The next morning, I made breakfast and looked back at the rented house where we had lived for a long time. Lucia was still sleeping in bed. I couldn't resist bending down and lightly touching her lips. Goodbye. Lucia, the poplar swayed high in the wind. The north wind penetrated, and the leaves rustled one after another. The wind blew through the treetops and slipped along the crowded streets, bringing the autumn chill into my bones. I tightly clenched my hands and then weakly loose and down, feeling the trembling fusion of blood at my fingertips and the wind. I walked aimlessly toward the coffee shop where I had an appointment with her father yesterday. Following the plot can avoid the things I'll do when I return to China, I had asked this question countless times. Yes, now you just need to follow the plot. Take the 50 million from the heroine's father, and go abroad to complete the task. But this plot is a small climax, you need to follow the lines we provide. But it's nothing for you. After the plot, you will no longer be controlled by the script and will have 50 million. You will be the only character to escape the script's rules and start your own life, but there's one thing that must be emphasized. You cannot return to your country for three years. During this time, the male and female leads are getting to know each other and falling in love. Your appearance would affect the plot, so you cannot appear. I looked at the rapidly receding scenery outside the car window and silently agree in my heart. The cafe was upscale, with a decor that could make one feel intimidated. The place had been cleared out, and only a middle-aged man in a suit sat by the window with a cup of coffee. I walked over, sat opposite him, and greeted him. He smiled faintly, his face showing no clear emotions. Mr. Wan, you know why I asked you to meet, right? Of course, I knew, Mr. Liu, 
who had navigated the business world for years, wouldn't be foolish enough to use a check to drive away a poor bull. In some corner of the cafe, perhaps directly opposite me, there was likely a high-definition camera recording my every move, capturing my ugly face. If his daughter remained stubborn, this surveillance footage would be his best evidence. They just wanted to see what kind of person I was. All right, I'll get straight to the point. I don't want to speculate maliciously that Mr. Wan is with my daughter for our family's money and status, but at least you should know by now, from what I know, your parents died early and you got into a prestigious university on your own. The small projects you've been working on recently do have potential. George, you're a smart person, but ultimately, you and our family are not a match. A disparity in status means I cannot agree to entrust my daughter to you. He said casually, the coffee in front of him untouched. Even while saying such things, his tone was extremely authoritative. Sometimes, Lucia resembled him, exuding an air of long-standing nobility in her every move. I remained silent. It wasn't time for me to speak yet. I've advised Lucia, but she's stubborn since she was a child. He smiled. But George, I can tell you very clearly that I've been Lucia's father for over 20 years, and I know her better. Ultimately, it's just youthful ignorance. Being with you, she regretted in the future, when the time comes, and you argue over trivial matters in life, all that will be left is mutual annoyance and mess. He pushed a check towards me. Mr. Wong, make a decision now, money, or an uncertain future. Reading the lines the system transmitted in my mind, I picked up the check on the table, glanced at the number, and showed a seemingly satisfied expression before putting it in my pocket. Mr. Liu, you make a good point, and I'm not stupid, of course, I choose money. What's love? I smiled. I dated Lucia because she's pretty and it gives me face, but she's too clingy, always controlling me and affecting my other relationships. It does get uncomfortable after a while. Don't worry, Mr. Liu, I'll take this money and disappear as far as possible, his face darkened. And I could imagine how angry Lucia would be when she saw this. Mr. Liu's goal was achieved, he didn't want to waste any more time on me. As he stood up to leave, I stopped him. Mr. Liu, do you need me to break up with Lucia in person, humiliate her and tell her I dumped her so she gives up completely? Otherwise, I won't feel at ease taking this money. This was the last line the system gave me. He was rarely furious. No need. Just disappear from my daughter's life as far as possible and never bother her again. I looked at the poplars outside the window. All right, I'll disappear from her life. Please tell her from me. Don't wait for someone who hurts you. Never find another poor bull. And live well with the one destined for you. In harmony and love. That's what I wanted to tell her. Mr. Liu looked back, his eyes filled with contempt. You're not worthy. The momentary weightlessness of taking off made me a bit dazed. The ticket had been booked the day John arranged to meet me. In the morning, I took the check, and by the afternoon, I was at the airport, only packing one suitcase. My departure was predestined, and perhaps our meeting and falling in love were also destined to end in separation. While waiting for the flight, I received a voice message from Lucia. I listened. She was crying, she said. George, come back right away. I'm giving you a chance, she said. I don't care what you said. Just come back, and I'll give you everything you want. If you don't come back, you'll be the person I hate most in this world. There were more voice messages, getting longer and longer. I didn't continue listening. Goodbye, my love, Lucia. A year after going abroad, I returned the 50 million to that account. This 50 million might not be much for the Liu family. It might not even make a ripple in some account. And John might notice, I wouldn't say anything, but it made me feel a bit better. The love back then would seem purer, even though it was just self-deception. When I first arrived abroad, I received some calls from home, especially from my former roommate. He wanted me to return, sighing that I had no conscience. But I couldn't go back, not even tell them why I couldn't go back, I didn't delete or block them, trying to glean information about Lucia's current life from their words. Gradually, the messages stopped coming, and Lucia and I disappeared completely from each other's worlds. Knowing the plot, I imagined our distant lives by now. Lucia should have met the male lead. By now, Lucia should have changed her view of the male lead. 
By now, Lucia should be starting to let another man into her life, taking him to meet our old friends, Lucia. See, I'm not that malicious. I also wanted to start a new life as the system suggested. After adjusting and getting used to life abroad for half a month, I began to forge ahead in the field I aspired to. Surrounded by suitors, people abroad didn't understand the restraint and subtlety of my compatriots. Each was more open and enthusiastic, just like the radiant and bold Lucia back then. But it was still different. Lucia had a unique feeling. They all fell short. Sometimes I despised myself, thinking about how Lucia might be sweetly in love with the male lead now. Why should I pretend to be faithful to her when I was the one who abandoned her, but I still couldn't do it? Leaving Lucia, I seemed to lose the ability to love. I could only pour all my energy into my career, numbing my mind to avoid constant overthinking. Three years passed. Neither unbearable nor easy. Some mechanical voice in my ear sounded like a drop of water falling into hot oil, making my heart boil. George, the main plotline for the male and female leads is now complete. The system will release its binding on this world. After that, you'll be able to control your own life, to be honest. I've grown quite attached to you over the years. You've always kept me on edge, fearing that one day you wouldn't follow the rules and let this world collapse. But luckily, it's all coming to an end now. The rest of the story is for you to write. I was free. I could go back to my country. But should I? They had finished the main plot. What was the point of returning? I no longer felt the strong desire I once had. Lucia should have forgotten about me by now. I didn't know. She probably hated me to the core after seeing the surveillance footage of me saying those hurtful words. Word by word. She once said, I was the person she hated most in this world. So, should I risk my love for Lucia and return? I undoubtedly still loved Lucia, but I respected her love. She no longer wanted to see me. So why should I go and stir up painful memories for her? Causing misunderstandings with her new love. Plans never keep up with changes. I received an unexpected call. John. I hesitated for a few seconds before answering. In those seconds, many thoughts flashed through my mind. The 50 million? No. Such an amount was nothing to them. Had she discovered that her new boyfriend looked like me and thought I was deceiving her? No. That was too absurd. George, do you still remember me? His voice was just as I remembered from four years ago, but slightly weaker. I remember, Mr. Liu, you gave me 50 million to leave your daughter, but that was three years ago. I followed your request and broke up with Lucia, and I haven't appeared in front of her since. What can I do for you now, Mr. Liu? He didn't speak immediately, so I took the initiative. You don't think I broke my promise, do you? No. No. George, uncle trusts you, uncle? I received 50 million in my account earlier, which should be from you. I've wronged you all these years. I feel very guilty. Do you want to come back? I won't stop you from being with Lucia. I was full of questions, had John been possessed. I had a bad premonition, frowning deeply. Could this be a twist in the plot? No need, Mr. Liu. I've already returned the 50 million. We owe each other nothing. I've been living well abroad these past few years. And my career is focused overseas. I have no plans to return for now. If there's nothing else, I'll hang up. Feeling a rising irritation, I thought, why should I go back to see that heartless girl who once said she'd change both friends every week happily with someone else and drive me crazy? Wait, George, it was really my fault back then. I've realized now that you and Lucia are truly a perfect match. You're much better than that Itu Makoto. Hearing this, I understood his real intention and smirked coldly, my voice turning icy. Are you asking me to return and drive away Lucia's current boyfriend? He seemed embarrassed but still spoke righteously. He's not her boyfriend, just a guy trying to use my daughter to climb the social ladder. Believe me, come back and see for yourself. Seeing that I had no intention of returning, he dropped a bombshell. George, if you return, I'll give you a third of my shares as a partnership. I closed my eyes, feeling tired. Mr. Liu, I had no interest in such external possessions before, and I have no intention of getting involved in your affairs now. If you're really troubled, perhaps using the same method you used to persuade me to leave would work on Mr. Ito. I knows you've created many legends in the financial sector abroad, 
and you might not care about money anymore, but Lucia. That's enough, Mr. Liu. I had a meeting later, so I won't bother you further. I hung up the phone first. Knowing the plot, I guessed why he was so anxious to find someone he once paid to get rid of. Lucia was his only daughter. Cherished since birth, but the male lead arranged by the system for her had nothing to offer besides a good face and a bit of cunning ambition. His conditions didn't meet John's standards, and his family was parasitic and futile. Moreover, Lucia still held grudges over what happened years ago. The more John didn't want her with the male lead, the more she wanted to rebel, especially since the male lead resembled her first love. The plot also mentioned Lucia's later obsession with Mr. Ito, to the point of risking her life to protect him, which raised John's blood pressure significantly. It was hard for him to even meet the guy, let alone try to pay him off. As I pondered, the frustration in my heart grew heavier. Lucia wanted to prove she was no longer the person she was three years ago. Ironically, I had to return because my ID card expired and needed to be renewed. My first reaction was to entrust David to handle it, so I wouldn't have to go back myself. But he firmly told me it had to be done by a close relative. Feeling as if my heart had turned to ashes, I let out a long sigh, which only earned David's mockery. After all these years, some worries are unnecessary. Come back, brother, and I'll welcome you back. That night, tossing and turning when able to sleep, angrily thinking this must be the system's trick. A message from an unknown number popped up on my phone. It read, George, your concerns are unnecessary. The system has long since unbound. I'll tell you one more time. From now on, it's your own story. For a moment, I felt dazed, and I couldn't find any trace of the message again, as if I had dreamed it. Three years passed, bringing many changes. I leaned back in the VIP lounge at the airport, holding my phone and waiting for my assistant. Through the glass reflection, I saw myself lazily reclining on the chair, feeling a bit weary. These years of striving in the business world had long stripped away my youthful innocence. Lucia once said that, in her eyes, I had the temperament of a bright, gentle youth, like the wind and the moon. But now, I was far from the image she admired. If I appeared before her now, she. Forget it. There are no ifs. I lowered my eyes, and a familiar scent filled my nostrils. I looked up in shock, my eyes searching frantically. She was wearing a red dress, and a flight attendant was pushing her luggage as she passed by me. Her wavy hair bounced lightly with her steps, still radiant and beautiful. My gaze followed her, and at the moment she was about to exit, she turned back. Our eyes met, her cold almond-shaped eyes staring at me. I had anticipated encountering her again, after returning to the country and had envisioned many scenarios for our reunion. Whether she would angrily confront me or sarcastically ridicule me, I was prepared. But I hadn't expected to see her so soon. Nor had I anticipated that her eyes would be so empty. Like a calm well, as if she were looking at a stranger. The next moment, she turned her head away. We met again half a month later. In a strange coincidence, in a hospital. David was whining, saying, who would have thought? I got so excited hearing you were back. I drove a bit too fast and ended up in an accident. I was speechless. 180 miles per hour and you called that a bit too fast. If you hadn't told me, I'd suspect you did it on purpose, hoping I'd cover your medical bills, and you're lucky to be alive. Did you cheat death? He <laughs> had, so please. Brother Wong, go to the end of the corridor and settle the bill. Shaking my head, I headed to the billing office, but as I was about to reach it, I heard a familiar female voice from a nearby ward. I stopped, I knew I shouldn't. We were now strangers, and I shouldn't focus on her. Besides, she had the male lead as her beaufriend now. I lifted my foot but paused again, reaching for the cigarette pack in my pocket. Leaning against the window in the corridor, I lit a cigarette, I didn't know why I did it. Even if she were sick, she didn't need me to coax her into taking medicine. And even if she were ill, the Liu family on the hospital, they wouldn't neglect her. The voice inside the ward wasn't too loud, and it didn't sound like the pampered young lady was the one sick. Lucia, thank you for arranging this room for me. I never knew a hospital could be so luxurious. My son found himself a lucky girlfriend. By the way, you and Idu Makoto have been together for a while. When are you getting married? The middle-aged woman's voice was relentless and pressing. My son is very talented and smart since he was young. When will you introduce him to your father? 
he will definitely appreciate him. Then, Yuta can live happily ever after, and he can take care of the business, you just enjoy life at home and aim to have two kids in three years. I'll help take care of them. What venomous words. My hand trembled with the cigarette. I knew Lucia, though a bit spoiled. She had her own principles and judgment. She would definitely reject such insidious suggestions. Okay, auntie. Ben. I kicked the unlocked door open, startling everyone inside. I scanned the old woman's cunning, emaciated face, with her prominent cheekbones and sunken eyes. Despite her faintly sickly appearance, she looked shrewd and harsh. Hadn't she noticed anything? Couldn't she hear or see? Was she blind after three years? The man in the white shirt beside her was good-looking, but I refused to admit that the system said the male lead resembled me by 60%. I don't have a son. Couldn't Lucia find an original? I looked deeply at the obediently standing Lucia, feeling stifled. I averted my gaze and apologized. Sorry, wrong door. Lucia was entirely different from before, so much so that she didn't seem like herself. Lucia, are you okay? The man stepped forward and held her hand, making my temples throb with anger. I admit I was insanely jealous. Lucia glanced at me mechanically, her face devoid of emotion. I'm fine. We were about to leave. Thank you for opening the door. Ito Makoto's gaze shifted between us, finally stopping on my face for a moment. His chest heaved, his brows furrowed. Do you two know each other? No. Lucia answered decisively. Both Ito and his mother visibly relaxed. I lowered my eyes, not wanting to interfere further. As I turned to leave, Ito called out. Are you George, who recently returned from abroad, Mr. Wong? I didn't deny it, and Ito eagerly approached to shake my hand. I saw your return news online. I greatly admire your achievements in the international financial world. My friends even joked that we look somewhat alike, seems like fate. Ito's mother, sitting on the hospital bed, also beamed. Praising her son's excellence, she was thrilled to see her son making powerful connections. With the Liu family's support and other influential people backing him, her son would become a significant figure. Thinking of this, Ito's mother's smile grew deeper. Ito, hearing his mother's praise, shook his head helplessly. Mr. Wan, my mother is like this. Please don't mind her. By the way, can we exchange WeChat contacts? I'll be joining Liu's company soon and would like to seek your advice. When my girlfriend and I get engaged and marry, I hope you'll honor us with your presence. I looked at the angry young lady behind him and declined. No, I'm not interested, not interested in attending Lucia's wedding with someone else, lest I turn into the villain. If I ruined her cherished wedding, who knows how much more she would hate me. Unsurprisingly, John found out about my return. He greeted me at the company's entrance with a smile, leading me to his CEO office. His smile was particularly kind. George, you've seen that girl Lucia, haven't you? John's face suddenly looked haggard when he mentioned her. I nodded politely, Mr. Liu, you can call me by my name. As for your daughter, yes, I have seen her. In this farce, the only person I owe an apology to is Lucia. I can make concessions for her, compromise, restrain my desires, and be infinitely forgiving, as for everyone else, it's business. You've met that man too. That man. It seemed John didn't like Hito Makoto at all, indeed. It was only her poor judgment that led her to find to paupers. I couldn't help but feel frustrated at her lack of discernment. I saw him at the hospital. Lucia was with his mother. John slammed his hand on the desk in anger. She won't even visit her father who has high blood pressure. But she runs to serve an old vixen with ulterior motives. It's like she's possessed. After a moment, John stood up and patted my shoulder reassuringly. George, believe me, the one in Lucia's heart is definitely you. Otherwise, she wouldn't have found someone who looks so much like you. That Ito Makoto is just a stand-in, someone she found to annoy me. He can't compete with you, he's small-minded, his family background is poor, and he lacks ability, his shifty eyes show he has no good intentions. This girl, I don't know what has gotten into her, she keeps threatening me. If I didn't agree to let that man join the company, she wouldn't even let me see him. I don't have his contact details. Otherwise, I would have asked him to leave long ago. The last time I met him, I offered him money to go away, but he acted all righteous, to be honest. 
I prefer your straightforwardness, you're upright and ambitious. I always said my daughter's choices are the best, except for this one. You didn't disappoint me. John's outburst caught me off guard. Although I knew I was the villainous gold digger in the script, regretting that I couldn't stay true to my love for Lucia. I was rational. I wasn't the melodramatic protagonist who would give everything for love. After weighing the pros and cons, I decided not to participate in the upcoming plot. This way, I could avoid further torment and potential tragic outcomes. I pressed my lips together, avoiding eye contact. I'm sorry, Mr. Liu. I'm not clear about their relationship, but I don't want to interfere. I don't like competing with other men. The past is the past, and everyone can start a new life. Yes, a new life. I used to not understand why love meant letting go. After falling in love with Lucio, I always tormented myself between holding on and letting go. Now I understood. I was too self-centered. When I thought about the plot where my entanglement and sabotage caused her to frown, her restless thoughts, and her arm and eyes filled with pain and hatred, my heart ached. I wanted her to always be bright and happy, like a rose that blooms forever. If her happiness required me to let go, then I was fortunate to be able to do this last thing for her. The office door opened, and Lucia stood at the entrance with clenched fists. Her pale yellow dress flowed down to her cats, like a delicate RU kill porcelain. Beautiful but fragile, Ito Makoto stepped forward from behind her, not noticing her emotions, and looked at John with a fawning smile. Mr. Dot Liu, hello, we've met before. I'm Lucia's boyfriend. He emphasized the word boyfriend, giving me an unhappy glance. They must have heard my conversation with John. Lucia said you arranged a position for me. I came to take a look. Seemingly natural enemies, John's reaction upon seeing Ito Makoto was immediate. Turning to Lucia with anger, Lucia, you're an adult now, be sensible. Bringing such an unqualified man to our company, demanding a managerial position, you. Having just heard those words and facing John's criticism, Lucia's chin trembled in grievance. She glanced at me with a complex expression and turned to leave. Mr. Dot Liu, don't blame Lucia, she's just a considerate of me. I'll treat her well in the future. I hope I don't cause conflicts between you. I know you're not satisfied with me yet and that my family background is lacking, but I'll work hard. I've been learning a lot recently. John was clearly furious, but years of experience in the business world weren't for nothing. He sneered. Let me make it clear, I won't agree to my daughter marrying you. Don't even think about Liu's company. If Lucia insists on being with you, I'll cut ties with her. She won't have any shares, money, or property. Everything will go to charity after I'm gone. I stood aside, ready to leave. Ito Makoto had just learned of my identity as Lucia's first love, and John was criticizing him at every turn. It was best for me not to get involved. Seeing my intention to leave, John shifted the conversation. George and Lucia are both top graduates, creating business miracles abroad in just a few years. He's outstanding and was Lucia's first love. This is the son-in-law I envisioned. Someone who matches Lucia, as for you. I'm a million times dissatisfied. This old fox was determined to drag me into this mess, but I just wanted to leave. Mr. Dot Liu, I don't mind that Lucia hid this from me, but they are the past, now. I'm the one she loves, the one she wants to spend her life with. And at least I won't abandon her for money. That would be heartless, John sneered, of course. You can't be bought off with a little money. You want the entire Liu's company. You have a big appetite. Mr. Dot Liu, you misunderstand me. Point oh nine. At 10 o'clock in the evening, I had just finished showering, wrapped in a towel, ready to dry my hair and go to the study to work. My phone on the bedside table flashed with a message from David. 28 John Shin Road, Shifu Bar. I raised an eyebrow, pausing my hair drying. This guy was supposed to be in the hospital. Why was he asking me to go to a bar? Did he teleport? I typed not going, but before I could send it, he sent a photo. It was a picture of Lucia. Going. The bar was dim, and Lucia was sprawled on the counter, drunk, with a half-empty bottle of liquor beside her. Her fair, slender arm was bent under her head, revealing half of her seductive, unknowing face. Her slender neck looked so fragile as if it would break with a pinch. 
I had never seen her drunk like this. If it weren't for the many dirty looks directed at her from around the bar, I would have wanted to watch her a bit longer and remember her different expressions. During our years together, I never took her drinking. She had always said she couldn't hold her liquor and would get drunk easily. Her brightness turned into fragility, her pride and assertiveness into weakness and compromise. So, Lucia, what have you been through these past few years to become such a different person? My eyes showed guilt. Lucia seemed to sense my presence. When I approached her, she lifted her head, her eyes hazy and distant, as if trying hard to recognize the man standing before her. After a moment, she lowered her eyes and mumbled softly. George, yes, it's me. No, you're not him. The originally dazed woman suddenly got angry under the influence of alcohol. George went abroad. He didn't like me. I was the one chasing him all along. I know he agreed just to avoid the hassle. I won't go abroad to find him. I, Lucia, have my pride. I'll find someone like him. I'll make him mad. But, Lucia's mouth drooped in grievance. This man feels like he put a spell on me. I looked at the woman, her head resting on the counter, drunk and tired, and impulsively asked, Really? Do you still like him? She seemed to be thinking, her long, butterfly-like eyelashes fluttering, I like him. No. I don't like him. I hate him the most. I sighed helplessly. All right. I get it. You like me the most. I took her drunken, limp body in my arms, intending to take her back, but she was suddenly yanked away. Lucia struggled uncomfortably for a few moments, mumbling, don't touch me, that she was weak and drunk, and I easily pulled her into my arms, soothing her. All right. All right. Feeling better now. She buried her head in my chest, nodding honestly but stubbornly muttering, who are you, who told you to take care of me? I feared saying George would wake her from her drunken state, so I remained silent, letting this drunk talk nonsense. It was almost midnight, and her boyfriend hadn't shown up to check on her. I asked, Lucia, I'll take you home, where do you live? I was very reluctant to call John, not wanting to cause more trouble. Just as I was fretting, she reached into her pocket and pulled out a key. That. I recognized it immediately. Driving through familiar streets, the scenery outside the window brought back memories. The road we used to walk, the square where she would cuddle up to me like a cat, the lab building where we would meet after class, the school gate where I first saw her, circling around, the car finally stopped at the apartment complex where we once lived together. The sycamore trees lining the road had shed some yellow leaves, the moonlight casting a gentle glow on the path. A few pedestrians walked by, creating a warm yet lonely atmosphere, full of everyday life that easily drew one into nostalgia. I carried her out of the car and back to our former love nest. Using that familiar key, I opened the door and laid her on the bed. The apartment looked exactly as it did for years ago when I left. I looked around in amazement, my eyes welling up. The wooden dining table chosen by Lucia still stood there, with a glass vase holding the flowers I used to give her. The sofa still had the cushions we picked out together, a mix of cold minimalism and cute plush toes, creating a unique visual challenge. The spider plants and succulents on the windowsill were still thriving, and our Kalajira shirts and her dresses were neatly arranged in the wardrobe. Photos and picture frames filled the corners, covering a small section of the wall. Pictures of us kissing, holding hands, her leaning into my arms, her angry, her happy, kissing under fireworks. While she slept in the bedroom, I sat quietly on the sofa in the living room all night, reminiscing about everything we once had. When Lucia woke up, I had just prepared breakfast. Why am I here? Overnight, she seemed to regain her cold demeanor. But last night's drunk Lucia showed me that she was just putting on a brave front. Lucia had her pry. Eat some breakfast first. I placed the plate on the table and looked at her. Who wants to have breakfast with you? If you don't want to say, Forget it, she frowned, seemingly annoyed at her blackout from last night. Last night, David messaged me to go to the bar to find you. It was late, and you were very drunk and rambling, you gave me this key, so I brought you here. She closed her eyes in embarrassment. What, did I say? I found her expression amusing but held back my laughter, clearing my throat as if to recount everything in detail. You said, forget it. Don't say it. It was just drunken nonsense. Can't take it seriously. 
I pushed a plate of steamed buns toward her. I believe people speak the truth when they're drunk. But if you say it doesn't count, then it doesn't. Lucia was initially angry at the mention of drunken truth-telling but couldn't react in time before being mollified by the seemingly indulgent words. Her phone rang, interrupting her mood. She glanced at the caller ID, frowning unconsciously before hanging up, Ito Makoto, or that mother-in-law who expects her future daughter-in-law to serve her. By the way, your boyfriend, Lucia, have I ever told you not to date poor Bose, George? What right do you have to say that? Weren't you a poor nobody back then? At least Ito Makoto didn't ignore me from the start, didn't make me chase him, and wouldn't leave for money. So, Lucia, you're blaming me, aren't you? Because you care. You blame me. She didn't respond. Lucia, let's get back together. The space froze for a moment. George, are you crazy? You took the money and left back then. Do you think you can just say a few words and reconcile? I returned that 50 million when I went abroad. Lucia, if you're willing, we still have a chance, if I'm willing. Then tell me, if it wasn't for money, why did you leave? The muscles in my face tensed, I couldn't answer. I couldn't say a word about the plot, did you stop liking me? Or did you think I was the easiest to deceive? George, I hate that you never tell me anything, always keeping me in the dark, making me a fool, if you had given me any reason. I would have tried to believe you, but you didn't even bother to lie. I, Lucia, have my pride. I don't need your pity or guilt to reconcile. She blinked away at her tears, holding them back. That's it. Next month, whether you come or not, I'll be getting engaged to Ito Makoto. She let out a bitter laugh, stood up, and asked me to leave. After leaving, I fell ill. It seemed like the relationship between her and me was a dead end. With a pale face, I looked out the floor to ceiling window, at the bleak autumn wind and thought of the summer wedding on the lawn she once dreamed of during our passionate love. She said she wanted to wear a white satin wedding dress, step in crystal shoes, and be led step by step towards me by her father. Time has passed, and nothing has gone as she wished. But, Lucia Liu, are you really happy like this? Are you truly willing to marry Makoto Ito? A tickle in my throat made me cover my mouth and cough a couple of times. I took a folder from the safe and put it in my briefcase. After I went abroad, Lucia Liu deleted all my contact information, so I had no choice but to contact John. At a high-end restaurant near the Liu family, Lucia Liu arrived gracefully. The weather was getting colder. She wore a lotus pink knit sweater, and her cheeks were as white as condensed milk. But she had also lost a lot of weight, like the transition from summer to autumn, her bright and flamboyant demeanor had withered rapidly. Do you have something to say? I don't think we have any reason to meet. I have to go to the bridal shop to try on my dress. If you have something to say, say it quickly. Her eyes were empty, and her words were distant. I couldn't help but cough a few more times and handed her the document. Your father said that if you insist on being with Makoto Ito, he would cut ties with you, and you wouldn't inherit his funds and shares. He should have already stopped your supplementary card by now. Lucia Liu looked at me. Are you here to mock me? I shook my head with a bitter smile. No. Lucia Liu, for past events, you have no position to forgive me. Ultimately, it's all my fault, although I can't be your diligent husband. I can still make you a beautiful and wealthy woman. This document is my voluntary transfer. Maybe it wasn't much to you in the past, but it's enough for you to live well in the future. I watched her hold back tears as she touched the cold cover of the document with trembling hands. This was earned for you, just given to you in a different form. I've met Makoto Ito and his mother, they are not easy to get along with, and their intentions and exploitation of you are strong. Don't be foolish enough to tell them about these things. If in the future, I stopped my speculation and forced a smile, forget it. Let's not say anything inauspicious. I still wish you happiness and joy in the future. I am your backing. As long as you look back, I will always be there for you. The person opposite me had red eyes and remained silent. I continued. Aren't you going to try on your dress? Don't cry your eyes out, or people will think you're being forced into marriage. Her eyes, filled with tears, couldn't hold back the water, and a crystal clear tear rolled down her cheek, making me feel pity. She frowned in pain. George, do you think a few words and some money can erase what you did? 
You're wrong. You didn't even give me a reason for leaving. I'll never forgive you. Sorry. It's not that I didn't want to say it, but I couldn't. On the day Lucia Liu got engaged, I happened to have to handle overseas affairs and leave the country again. That's fine too. It's better than watching the woman I love walk towards another man. According to the plot given by the system, the story is about to end at this point. I didn't follow the original plot where I was arranged to be the villain who sabotages the male and female leads love. I was rational and restrained, successful and famous, and I achieved my original goal. At that time, I scoffed. Thinking a man shouldn't be obsessed with love. Dating was just a game to avoid being controlled by the system. But love is torturous, missing her for even a day drove me crazy. In the end, I was still like the character in the plot, unwilling and in pain. I pushed the suitcase indifferently, standing bewildered at the boarding gate. George, a familiar voice sounded behind me, making me think I was hallucinating. Are you leaving again? How many years this time? I turned around to see Lucia Liu standing a meter away, dressed in a gray long sleeve shirt and jeans, slightly out of breath as if in a hurry. I don't want to persist in asking that question anymore. It seems that compared to losing you, the reason you left back then isn't important at all. I don't want to be stubborn anymore. George, can't you coax me? I care so much about you. If you coax me, I will forgive you. This is my last act of courage. If you leave, I will truly let go. I can't wait for so many years anymore. Seeing her aggrieved and fragile appearance, my heart almost shattered. I couldn't care about anything else. I let go of my suitcase and quickly walked over to hold her in my arms. I'm just going to handle some work. I said I would be your backing. Lucia buried her face in my chest, quietly crying, her voice muffled and choked with sobs. You only know how to bully people, always bullying me, acting all high and mighty, waiting for me to give in. I thought you were leaving again, so I didn't even have breakfast. I hate you. Then I'll make it up to you with breakfast. She looked up from my arms, her eyes almost covered with tears, and asked blankly. Then you're not working. I'll change the flight. Accompany you first. At the airport fast food restaurant, I inserted a straw into her so milk and handed it to her. She took it with one hand while eating a burger with the other. Seeing the young lady finally willing to let me serve her again, I felt much relieved. She glared at me. I just don't want to argue, but I didn't say I forgive you. I smiled helplessly and smoothed her messy hair. Okay, I'll try to avoid the death flag while pursuing my wife. HMPH. Her phone kept ringing. She looked at it and turned it off. I hadn't forgotten today was her engagement party. Since you ran out today, how will you handle Makoto Ito? Hum. She chewed her food, her mouth full. I'm not really stupid. It's clear what he and his mother are plotting. Anyway, whether you leave or not, I won't marry him. He is just, just, she glanced at me guiltily. Just used to annoy me, right? I added for her. Didn't you see I wasn't annoy at all? She retorted. I lost by one move, okay. I looked at her with a smile, both angry and helpless, who said I wasn't annoy. Didn't you see I got sick right after you said you were getting engaged? She cleared her throat and changed the subject. I signed an agreement with Makoto Ito earlier. I provided the best treatment for his mother and gave him a job at Liu's, and he acted as my agreement boyfriend, playing his role after you returned. But later he couldn't distinguish between primary and secondary and really wanted to marry me and get my father's property. His mother was even worse, but now that I ran away from the engagement party, my dad will surely clean up the mess happily. I squinted at her suspiciously. Lucia Liu, I always feel like you're hiding something from me. No. Why would I hide anything from you? Besides, you didn't tell me the reason you left. Shouldn't it be you hiding something from me? She lowered her head, sipping so milk in small sips, her guilty expression obvious. Forget it. It was my fault anyway. After a two-week business trip, the first thing I did upon returning home was to visit the Liu residence with gifts. Since I had promised Lucia, I couldn't go back on my word. John was sitting comfortably on a mahogany chair, sipping tea. The old fox's eyes were full of smugness when he looked at me. My daughter is truly amazing. I sat respectfully by his side, without arguing, considering I would be marrying his daughter in the future. 
continuing to be arrogant wouldn't be good. When are you planning to get married? I need to make some preparations. Upon hearing this, I glanced at the corner of the second floor railing where a rosy skirt was peeking out and smiled. No rush. Tap, tap, tap. The sound of someone coming down the stairs angrily. Next summer, Lucia likes summer lawn weddings. And it won't be cold than a wedding dress then. The loud footsteps stopped abruptly, and a few seconds later, turned into a quiet retreat upstairs. John shook his head. She's hopeless. I just want to protect her. John looked satisfied and advised, use this time to deal with Makoto Ito. He's a tricky one, especially his mother. I'm afraid they might do something irrational when they realize their wealth is slipping away. I won't interfere in your young people's matters. John was indeed farsighted. Makoto Ito and his family were indeed restless. Faced with the loss of a huge fortune, they were naturally unwilling to let it go. Makoto Ito, aware of the disparity in power between the two sides, could only temporarily lie low and safeguard his current interests. His mother, however, was much more brazen. She even tried to contact the TV station for justice, but the agreement Lucia signed with Makoto Ito back then was still in place. We had someone present the agreement to Makoto Ito's mother. The comfortable life they had enjoyed these past few years came at a cost. And they were warned that if they violated the agreement, all the resources invested in them would be converted into cash and demanded back. It was unclear whether Makoto Ito's mother couldn't accept losing money or the fact that the wealthy daughter wasn't hopelessly in love with her supposedly unparalleled son. But she fainted. The wedding day was sunny. And the evening sunset in the summer was beautiful. What is marriage? It is a ceremony conducted at Dowsk, symbolizing companionship until old age. Our wedding was grand, luxuriously decorated, on a lawn, at dusk. Under the witness of family and friends, she slowly walked towards me, holding John's hand, with brilliant fireworks lit on both sides. This moment was something I never dared to imagine before. John handed her over to me, his eyes uncharacteristically red with a hint of sadness. I held her hand tightly, and under the fireworks, we made a promise to be together for life. Lucia. Yes. No one is worthy of you. Lucia. Except me. George. Not even the so-called protagonist. She laughed charmingly. Of course, that's an eternal truth. 